I will deliver the first budget of this Labour government. The first Labour budget in 14 years. And because I know, and because I know how much damage has been done in those 14 years, let me say one thing straight up. There will be no return to austerity. Conservative austerity was a destructive choice for our public services and for investment and growth too. Yes, we must deal with the Tory legacy, and that means tough decisions. But I won't let that dim our ambition for Britain. So it will be a budget with real ambition, a budget to fix the foundations, a budget to deliver the change that we promised, a budget to rebuild Britain. And my budget will keep our manifesto commitments. Every choice we make will be within a framework of economic and fiscal stability. You'd expect nothing less. We said we would not increase taxes on working people, which is why we will not increase the basic higher or additional rates of income tax, national insurance or VAT. And we will cap corporation tax at its current level for the duration of this Parliament. <laughs> Conference, as promised, we will extend the energy profits levy on oil and gas producers to invest in homegrown energy here in Britain. <laughs> we will end the non-DOM tax loopholes and we will crack down on tax avoidance and tax evasion. That is the difference that a Labour government will make. Conference, we will enact another manifesto commitment. Because I know every parent has aspiration for their children. And I know the strain that our state schools have been under. This government will introduce VAT on private school fees to invest in our state schools. It is the fair choice, the responsible choice, the Labour choice to support the 94% of our children in our state schools. That is the Britain we're building. That is the Britain that I believe. Labour finds itself in a very tricky situation. They came into power with big campaign promises, planning to reverse Conservative austerity, ruling out significant tax hikes <laughs> and committing to no more borrowing. Whilst these ideas sound attractive without raising taxes, it's hard to see how they can find the billions needed to follow through on their promise to reverse austerity. But we're going to explore how Rachel Reeves could adjust the fiscal rules to give herself more room to manoeuvre and whether the UK could even consider moving away from, the, from using the debt to GDP ratio entirely, as the IMF has suggested. Let's start with some context. Labour is currently grappling with what they call a £22 billion black hole. Bear in mind, some of that money is because they gave a pay rise to to public sector workers. There are only three ways to address this. More borrowing, more taxes or less spending. Unfortunately for Reeves, Labour has ruled out all three of these options. They've ruled out less spending by pledging not to return to austerity. And Reeves has also reiterated her plans to increase investment spending. They've ruled out most big tax increases, although there, there are still some areas like capital gains or pension contributions that could be targeted. However, it's hard to see them finding the £22 billion that they need from these. Labour has also ruled out more borrowing, having committed to fiscal rules similar to those outlined by Reeves' predecessor, Jeremy Cunt, I mean Hunt, in his Charter for Budget Responsibility. Fiscal rules are designed to show credibility to the markets and keep borrowing costs low. Labour's two key rules are, first, to cover the day-to-day -day costs with revenues, achieving a balanced budget, and secondly, that debt as a share of the economy, debt to GDP, must be falling by the fifth year of the forecast. However, whether this happens depends heavily on how debt is defined in the first place. You might wonder, how, what, how on earth can governments redefine debt? Surprisingly, yes. The measure the UK uses now is more expensive than what most European countries use, but cheaper than what we used to have. In 2022, we stopped counting government's bonds held by the Bank of England as part of public debt, which shaved off nearly 10% of GDP from the total. So what could she do? She could tweak how the Bank of England debt is counted. Returning to the pre-2022 pre measure could free up an extra £6 billion. This would raise the debt to GDP ratio. Also, it would make it easier to meet the rule of ensuring debt is falling by year five. Exclude payments to the Bank of England. The government currently compensates the bank for losses on debt bought up after the financial crisis and the pandemic. This costs around £2 billion annually. By excluding or halting these payments the government could ease the pressure on debt figures. We could, also, we could also follow Germany's approach with public investment vehicles. Germany's fiscal rules allow borrowing up to 0.35% of GDP, 
but they also create special funds for specific, for specific projects that don't count towards the national budget. If Labour were to exclude vehicles like GB Energy, UB, UK Export Finance or even the UK Infrastructure Bank, it could free up up to an additional £18 billion. Alternatively, Labour could make a more radical move, ditch the entire debt to GDP ratio altogether and instead measure assets and liabilities as companies do. The IMF has long advocated for this. The UK Treasury already uses two measures, Public Sector Net Financial Liabilities, which is PS, PSNFL, and Public Sector Net Worth, acronym PSNW, including both financial and physical assets like hospitals or land, which show a more accurate picture of the country's financial health and could free up about £65 billion in fiscal space for Reeves. However, these, whilst these measures might brighten Labour's five-year forecast, they could cause long-term challenges particularly as pension liabilities increase with an ageing population. This is why governments globally have been cautious about adopting such changes. In the US, with a debt-to-GDP ratio of 100% and a projected deficit of 7% of GDP, a move away from this measure might even make more sense. But let me know what you think in the comments. I've been Jay from Just Check, and as always, I'll see you next time. You actually made it to the end of the video. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, which, why haven't you already, is somewhere over there. And also, if you want to watch more videos, also check out over there. I've been Jake from Just Jake. See you later.